Alrighty, so um, yesterday we made a complicated, uh, not a complicated, we made a, uh, we made a project. It took about two hours, two videos, two hours. Today we're going to work on something maybe a little bit simpler and something we can parlay or take and use in another project. All of these are kind of interconnected um, in, in story, theme, and idea. Uh, yesterday we used um, my teddy bear Scooter, my grandson's teddy bear Honey Bear, who are two characters out of my little book, books, uh, stories from Scoo Scooterland. And I was trying to think today, what can we make, what can we make? By the way, hi, where are you? There you are, hi. <laughs> trying to think today what we can make. So I've been going through my little box where I've made illustrations, but made them into 3D illustrations like we did yesterday where there's all kinds of folded paper or paper, uh, toilet paper holders um, so we can make them 3D. Today we're going to do something a little bit different um, than we did yesterday. This one is going to start off... Oh, I'm sorry. Let me show you. These are a couple more illustrations. That's Bugsy and all the characters from the book as toys. This is Bugsy as a baby and his parent in their house, their little dog house. That stands up like that. Um, this is another character's house. This is Dixie's house. And it stands up using rolled up paper like that. So we've got like a three-dimensional feel to it. It helps to keep us occupied. I think it helps to encourage our imagination instead of turning to television or tablets. This is just something else to uh, something else that we can really dig into, put our heart and soul into, and kind of keep out all the bad things that are going on around us. This is one of the characters in the book. His name is Jimmy. Jimmy has very large hands and arms wrapped around him holding open a book um, where he's learning to read. And this is based actually on my grandson, Max, because his mom and dad <clears throat> read to him all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergies again. I was outside. It's full of pollen outside, so I, my, my chest gets clogged. Not my chest. My, never mind. I have allergies. Let's stick with that. Anyway, so Jimmy, we don't we don't know if this is one of his parents, if grandparents. It's just somebody, an adult, who's reading to him. And all of my books, all the stories start with Jimmy. All of them. It's him working his imagination into a storyline. And um, yeah, that's how they start. Jimmy in his living room, um, surrounded by all of his toys and his blocks and his drawing and drawing materials and paper like we have. There's Bugsy, that's my dog, who's also in the book. There's Scooter. Honey Bear will be in here somewhere. Here's another character, Jack. They all start off as stuffed animals. There's now uh, the turtle, which has gone through three different names and is now Max. There's the turtle and Jimmy reading a book using his imagination. And so that's what we're going to work on in these little, <clears throat> in my videos. All right, what we're going to do, this is something I made a while ago. It's just a sheet of paper with acorns acorns which have traditionally represented or symbolized um, the birth of an idea. Those acorns fall into the ground, they get fertilized, and a tree grows. And so that's what we're doing, is fertilizing ideas, making them grow and spread and build into something beautiful. And then feathers, so that we are as light as a feather while we're doing this. That's what they're meant to symbolize. I have a lot of feathers. I love them. Friends give them to me <clears throat> when they find them. Anyway, we've got my circles, which I love, and squares with lines in them, just cause, just cause. But we're gonna do, we're gonna work on this, and eventually this is going to become a little teepee that characters can sit in. And we'll make those characters later, but it's just a little teepee. 
Now yesterday, <clears throat> pardon me, God, yesterday when I was making the characters in a boat with you, I glued them together, and because the paper that we're using is regular printout paper, it's not very thick. So the paper buckled where we applied glue. Normally I don't have tape in my house. Normally I have none. But I happened to find this little roll in a random drawer, and uh, so I've pulled it out. If you don't have tape, then you use glue. If you have tape, try and use it because it'll keep it from looking like, keep the paper from looking like it got really, really wet and making crinkly, uh, getting all crinkly and buckled. Anyway, we're gonna make this. We're gonna make a teepee and then we'll make the characters to go in it in another video, okay? Like I said, I love the idea of feathers and acorns. So we're gonna stick with this. Again, I'm not using my fancy paper, my Strathmore Bristol paper. Instead, I'm using what I have on hand, which is printouts from my job. We're going to take our pencil and just start drawing things in. And I like to start with, let's see, do we want to start with the acorns or the feathers? Maybe we'll start with the feathers, because those could be more difficult. What it is, I'm going to draw along with you. Ready? Also, feathers are important in Indian culture. Um, and although we are borrowing from Indian culture, which is not always right, I love the feathers. So we're going to put them on. Did any of that come out right, Mom and Dad? I don't know, or whoever's watching this. Anyway. The feather, can, I hope you can see that. I'm going to grab a darker pencil. It's a line. Okay. And then I like to do a little rectangle point on the end. Come out, make another. Make two lines down. Does that make sense? A rectangle at the top, a line down, and a line cutting in. Because sometimes the feather, all the little feathers in the feather, separate like this just like that so I draw that space those two lines there indicate the space and we'll draw another line with a whole nother section of the feather we'll draw little feathers off of it and we're just going to do this over and over again Make sure you can see the space. And you can make a couple of sections. You don't have to make one section, two sections of the feather. You can split it up however you like, however you feel. And it's not meant, this is not meant to be stressful. There is no right or wrong. You just do the best you can. That's it. Another feather. Ready? Line down. There's the pointy end. It doesn't shouldn't be too pointy though. Birds aren't pointy. Birds are soft and round. So we made the line. Whoop. Line down here. Line down here. Line. Line. And then stray little feathers. Line. Line. Stray little feathers. And I don't really like that big blank space in between, so I'm just going to draw an extra little rectangle right in there. Okay. Let's draw another one. Now, like I said, we're going to draw characters probably in another video that will be sitting inside the, the teepee. And I know I'm moving quickly. <clears throat> I've been drawing these for a long time. Look at that's almost a leaf. 
the way I drew it. But I, even though I've been drawing them for a long time, I like to keep them simple. I like to keep things very simple. Because this should be fun. Now they're lying right down the middle. Just like when we're drawing people. We draw a line right down the middle of people. The figure. So we make sure that we keep in mind the balance, the spine, blah, blah, blah. Ooh, that one doesn't look very feathery. That's okay. I'm not going to stress over it. It's a way to keep us away from the television and all the anger and everything else going on. See that? Rectangle. Well, sorry. Line down the center. Rectangle. Ooh, a couple of stray feathers in there. <gasps> and okay. I think that's enough. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I like to do things in odd numbers. But it's okay. It's okay. We're going to go with that. Now, ready? We're going to draw some acorns. The birth of idea, the birth of imagination. That's what they represent. So it's going to be a circle or an oval, actually. An oval, a square. With a rounded rec... Oh, no, that doesn't look right. Never mind. Don't listen to me. Okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. So a circle. Two lines. Two lines on the bottom. Almost like an arrow, but rounded. And then we're going to... Boop. There. There's the little stem of the acorn. We'll put another one over here. And the nice thing is we can put them at angles so we can make this feel really flowy and artistic. So, with the oval, one, two lines, three, four lines, and we're going to round the bottom off a little bit. Because acorns aren't sharp and pointy either. Acorns are soft and round. I'm going to go like this. Oval, two lines, rounding the bottom. Maybe we put one. How about if we put another one just right here, a little one? I'm doing everything big so you can see it better. Oval, two lines, pointing down, and then rounding. Oval, two lines, make that point down, rounding it. Stem, oval, two lines, pointing down, rounding. There. So as you can see, it's all just, it's all of it is just lines, one line to, or a line, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> A shape or a line to give us some direction. As I said, like in a figure, just whoop. Okay, that tells us where the spine goes. That tells us how straight up and down the figure will be. How curvy the feather will be. What shape or what size the acorn will be. We're going to go circle, line, line. Put in as many as you like. It doesn't matter. It's your teepee. Oh, appropriation. That's the word I was looking for. Cultural appropriation. Um, I feel like Rain Man. 
just holding a conversation from 10 days ago. Anyway, now we're going to start uh, inking everything in. And uh, I use my fancy pens, the Faber Castells that I like. Um, this one is a brush pen, so it, I can do thin lines, I can do fat lines. But you use whatever you have, whether it's a regular old ballpoint pen or it's whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're not being graded on this. It's just for fun. So I'm going to take my little brush pen, go whoop. And you'll watch my lines. I don't do continuous lines. I don't make them perfect. They usually have little dots and dashes because I like that. I like the imperfections. There. There's my first acorn. That's all it is. We'll start with the acorns. They're a little less daunting than the feathers. Just get used to the having a drawing with a uh, pen. Kind of warm up. I'm following my lines, the pencil lines, but not um, not tracing them exactly. We're keeping it light-hearted like the feather. Sometimes I make noises when I'm painting or drawing. I go pew, pew, pew. Now remember, if you're using a Sharpie marker, it's going to bleed through. It could bleed through onto your paper underneath or onto your desk. That's why I never use Sharpie on my desk. Although I may have, but you have to scrub it off, so I'm just lazy. Speaking of which, speaking of lazy, I'm trying not to be. I don't know about you. I've been getting up every morning um, cleaning. I clean, put away my clothes make my bed, um, have something to eat. I do a little exercise again. I stopped for a little while, but I started again. Um, exercise, shower, put on clean clothes, and then set up to work for the day, make my artwork. I hope you're having as much, much success as I am. Um, if I don't follow that pattern, or if I don't follow through on things like that, I, will, I get sad. So, um, I'm just hoping that you're able to set up a pattern that keeps you from getting sad or feeling alone. Because right now we can't see our friends and family. And that's why we're doing this. All right? So you set up, uh, I have to set up a pattern so I feel, feel good. I feel good about myself. This is my reward for accomplishing my chores, is being able to draw it and then go paint. So anyway, I've finished up my acorns. Now we're going to do the feathers. Into the line, right down the middle. And you can see, I kind of stopped. I like to break up things. And we've got all these wonderful lines in, but I might want to do something a little bit different. They're just a guide. I wrote, drew these lines so I could do this. I could follow them if I so pleased. But right there, I decided not to, so I cut in. I gave a break in the feather. Look at that break in the feather right there. All right? Break in the feather. Look at how pretty that is. Isn't that something? So I've got my big shapes. Going in with some loose feathers. Decided to stick with the larger shapes there. I'm going to move on to the next feather. Look at how quickly that goes.
Okay, lying down the center, going up to the tippy top. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about things being perfect. Line down the center. Whoop. Maybe we keep it thin. Maybe we make it a little fat. Maybe we make two lines at the bottom. Because feathers are so much thicker. This is the part that goes in, uh, that's hanging on to the bird. When we see them flying, we see all, we see tons and tons of feathers all together. Tons and tons. And they have to hold on to the bird somehow. This is the end that holds on to the bird. So it's a lot thicker than the, than the outside edge. So maybe we put down two lines to indicate it. Or not. Doesn't matter. I have tons of birds around me. I'm down in Florida. We have cardinals, the bright red birds. We have catbirds, which are my favorite. They're just silly. Cardinals were my mom's favorite, so I always look for cardinals. Um, cadinals, as they would say in New England. Where I'm from. Um, we have woodpeckers everywhere. and parrots. They don't come to you. They travel, they stay up by the uh, telephone wires, up on the power lines, where it's safe for them. Okay, ready? But there's, sometimes I'll see flocks of them. One of the characters in my book, we'll draw Dixie later, one of the characters in my book is named Dixie. Okay, we'll, and we'll draw Dixie later, sorry. Um, Dixie isn't any one type of bird, he's a, just a generic bird I made up. Except that he's silly and ridiculous, and can be a little bit of a mean birdie, but he doesn't mean to be. He means to do well so many people. Okay, this is just moving along. Okay. We've almost got the big part of this done. Line down the middle, line down the middle. I'm going to do two lines on that one. I'm going to add a line over here, too. Decided that my feathers need to have that fat end. Look, I made a bump. It's not perfectly straight. My pen made it, so we'll just go with it. Just a second, we'll go in with 
circles. And I love circles. Circles are a reminder that everything is continuous. The circle is it never stops, never stops, never stops. And by that I mean life. It never stops. It changes, but it never stops. Circles also represent us everything being connected. Plus they're cool. Circle is kind of the perfect shape. It's pretty cool. Yep, adding a couple more stray little feathers. Now we're just we're gonna add our circles. We don't have to plan it out, you just pick a space. Like I'm gonna pick that space. And if you look, it's not the perfect circle. It's disconnected in a couple places, and that's okay. It's too hard to make connected circles, to make perfect, perfectly round circles. So we're not gonna worry about it. Look at, I'm just randomly picking places to put them. Because the thing is, we might see the boo-boos, but our head, and somewhere in our head, it makes perfect sense to us, too. And it's almost relaxing to look down and see the imperfections. It's almost a calming effect. For some people, for most people, for other people it's not. And I used to be one of those people. I used to be one of those people that imperfections almost physically hurt me. Now they don't. I started making myself make boo-boos, intentional boo-boos, so I could relax. Okay, I've got my circles in. Except for that one. There may be one there. Yep. That feels good. Okay, so now I'm going to add some squares. Now, squares are interesting. Those represent the four corners of the earth, even though there aren't any four corners and also the four elements. If you want to know what I'm talking about, look them up, the four elements. Because different cultures list four, diff uh, have different elements. They usually have um, air, water, Air, water, fire, earth, or dirt. But then it can diverge. It can go into something else. So look them up. Something like Chinese, in Chinese culture, when it comes to horoscopes, you have an animal in the year that you were born, I was born in 1963, my birth animal in 63 was the rabbit, the rabbit, the rabbit in Chinese. I have rabbits, rabbit tattoos in quite a few places. But then it's broken down into, into elements. One, two, three, four elements. Air, Earth, water, sky. I know in Korean culture, they're in different sides of the, uh, the square, and I can't remember which ones. 
but I happen to be a water rabbit. What a rabbit is doing in water, I'm not sure, beyond taking a bath. Okay, so now, because we don't want this just like this, we don't want it to stay that plain. Well, you might, because then that allows you to color it in. If you have crayons or whatever and you want to color it in, you can. I, however, like to add a little bit of dark. And as you can see, my little squares just have lines. So we're going to draw some lines. Grab your pen. Boink, 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 boink. That's it. Boink, 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 boink. Look, that line went outside, and it's okay. That line went outside the larger lines. It's okay. Boink, 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 boink. Boink, 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 boink. And see how I'm turning the paper? That's so I'm drawing my my lines at different angles. To keep this interesting, we have to have things going in different angles, just like our feathers, just like our acorns. Boink, 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 boink. Boink, 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 boink. Boink, 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 boink. Boink. That's it. That's it. We could do circles within the circles, like little circles within the circles, but I'm not going to bother with that. We could do lines within the circles, but again, I'm not going to bother with that. You are more than welcome to. I'm just going to keep moving along, and um, I want to finish up our little teepee. Now, this was a model I had made for myself, and all I did was I took a corner folded it just a tidbit, tad bit, titty bit, titty, titty, teddy bit. That didn't come out right. T-I-D-D-I bit, B-I-T. Pardon me? And then put glue on it, held it together like that so it would set. Ready? We're going to do it on ours now. I'm just going to pick a corner, doesn't matter which corner. going to fold it down. Remember, it doesn't matter. We don't have to be exact. Oops, there it is. Oh, hello. I just realized that, sorry, the, the thing that was there is holding the camera up. Whatever that black line was, it's hold, been holding the, my iPad up the whole time. So, folded it over, just like that. I'm going to tape it down this time. Eh, I'll use glue. That's what I've got. I don't want to use up all my tape. So I'm going to glue it right there. Got some on my table. It's okay. a little big, so I'm going to try the opening to it. Yeah, I think we're going to go with this. It leans a little bit, but it's okay. So now we've got something, we've got a structure. We've got, it leans a lot, actually, but it's okay. It's not a big deal. It's just for play. It's for fun. So now we've got something, so later we can make characters and place them inside. Okay? All right, that's about 35 minutes. That's all it took for us to do this. To make a teepee. All right, now don't forget, you can, if you have a copier, you can copy it. You can copy the, the image and have and print it out and color it and color it and just keep making it. 
If not, you've got the instructions right there how to make another one, how to draw the feathers which we love and the acorns that we love. It's all there. Okay, all right, ciao. We'll make characters next time. And I think what we're gonna do too, I have to remember this. Where is it, where is it, where is it? Um, I think we're gonna make a background. Crap, I am, sorry. I mean, oh darn it. I had bushes to go in back of here. Now what do you do with them? Oh my goodness, so ridiculous. I had bushes. I had bushes out. All right, I'll find it for next time, but we'll have a set of, we'll make a set of bushes to go back here, okay? All right, see you in a bit. Ciao.